This is a special informative presentation from the Pocono Northeast Resource Conservation and Development Council. The why and how of certified organic farming. You know, we're a resource conservation and development and in that way we, we touch so many areas. So we look at environment, we look at water quality, we look at things like organic farming. In the end, the objective is to see those things happen. So if we can do things that actually help them happen beyond information, great. But a starting point is understanding. So this whole section of this, this group of crops will be in another field. Next we year. have 600 acres certified and the farm itself is 235 acres right here on farm with about 120 acres of it in the past. It's amazing the amount of support that's out there. Organic certification is done by a third party. Pennsylvania Certified Organic is one of those. Lee Reinhardt is Director of Education and Outreach. Certification basically is a third party verification that what the organic farmer is doing on the ground, on the farm, um, conforms to the, to the rules and regulations of the National Organic Program. Yeah, we're actively looking for more land right now. I could, I could easily sell five times more than I can grow. My fan that kind of we're going to meet two farmers who operate organic farms and also learn about startup and benefits of the program. First is Greg Swartz. His crops include herbs, vegetables, and some berries. Each year, he estimates he is in about eight acres of cash crop vegetables. Each acre carefully cataloged and recorded. Record keeping is important to the organic way of life. You can't just substitute one conventional product for one organically approved product. It's actually a, a total change in production systems and actually a change in way of thinking. But this new way of thinking, working, and planning is of great benefit to a farmer looking to steady up cash flow and command premium prices for his products. Bill Plaus and his wife Delicia operate Plaus Family Farms. They produce raw milk, hay, and beef and there is no doubt in their minds about the dollar value of organic certification. Probably wouldn't be in business if I wasn't certified. Without the organic certification and the stabilization of the milk price and stuff, there's no way we could have been able to afford our mortgage and maintain our mortgage throughout this roller coaster that's been happening with milk prices. Being organic has saved our family farm. Bill is quick to point out that organic farming is still farming with all the inherent problems of the business. However, he also points out that the benefits of an organic farm come in thick and fast. We do minimum tillage, we're all grass-based, so we really don't do any tillage at all. The majority of our seeding we do is frost seeding. We have virtually no hoof problems. Our vet bill runs less than $1,000 every year. That includes all herd checks, dehorning, um, vaccinations, everything. I mean, the animals are twice as healthy. And the record keeping required for organic certification initially and for renewal, it becomes a valuable asset in daily operations, so it isn't wasted time. It gives you a lot of data to be able to make the decisions that you need to make to manage your farm successfully. Imagine paperwork that makes life easier. Then here we keep our pasture records as to where they go, our daily pasture rotations and the number. Um, we have a map of the whole farm with an overall grazing plan with the different paddocks documented on them. So if you like what you hear so far, pricing stability, good markets, lower expenses, and you would like to explore going organic on your own farm, then there are a few things you need to work on. You've already heard Lee Reinhardt speak to third-party certification. His company can do that for you, but there are others. Generally, he says, prices don't vary a whole lot, so you're looking for the other things you'll need. Things like customer service, things like educational benefits that are offered, Things like uh, materials review, being available to answer questions on, a, uh, on the phone whenever a farmer calls and says, you know, I've got this problem. Once you've settled on a third party, the work of documenting your application to become certified organic begins. 
It can be a lengthy process. We usually recommend that a farmer turn in their organic system plan to a certifier probably anywhere from, you know, four to five months prior to whenever they want their certificate. To this point, we have not mentioned a significant detail in considering whether or not to become a certified organic farmer. It is the matter of the environment, this place we call home, what we should and should not do to it. If a conventional farmer really cares about being a steward of the land and, and their animals, I feel it's pretty much a no-brainer. If you want to see biodiversity come back to your farm, if you want to see your animals thrive, and see the health problems and issues that you have go away. It's a really simple thing, in, in my opinion, to decide to do. Interested in switching over to organic farming? Already decided to switch over? Greg summed up the process quite well. You have to create your organic system plan, uh, submit it for approval, and then it gets checked. It gets verified through on-farm inspections as well as always having to maintain an audit trail. And you have that information to be able to go back to to make decisions. And you learn, hey, well, this paddock doesn't grow back quite as fast as this. Nothing is ever simple. You can't just flick the switch and get your organic certification and assume everything's going to go. True enough, but in switching over to organic farming, you need not go it alone. The third-party certifier becomes a major supplier of needed information, so getting one as soon as possible is key. Find one that you feel comfortable with and, and go with it. Um, you know, you want one that's going to provide you with information and it's going to work with you and help you maintain a certification and help you to make it a smoother process for yourself to complete it. Then comes the actual application and you will need to provide information about your farm, how you do things, how you've done them in years past. This can be daunting, but two things will happen because of it. You will know for sure where you've been and have a good idea of where you're going. After review of the application, the certifying agent will schedule an inspection of your farm. For a small operation, Lee says that look around can take possibly four hours. The inspector will look at the land, uh, will look at um, any materials that are used, will look at any barriers that are set up to prevent commingling from adjacent farms, um, will look at all the record keeping uh, and, and make sure that there is a, tra a traceable audit trail between all the materials that come into the farm and all the products that leave the farm. Financially, through a USDA cost share program administered by the state, once certification is complete, you can be reimbursed for up to 75% of fees returned to you. And once certification as an organic farmer is complete, all the work pays off because certification this rigorous means something. It means you have taken rigorous steps to convert your farm into an organic farm following strict guidelines, guidelines you will follow into the future. If you ask any of the folks we've seen here the future of our land, what's left to the next generation is really important, leaving the land better than we found it. It's wonderful to be able to look out and know that the land is still the way it was when I was a kid and know that we have some protection there to hopefully be able to keep it that way for another generation.